So together with Tessa Hilly, we host 13 year-round sport events um, for all of our athletes to practice and compete in. We take them out of town to compete on a state level and to other local competitions um, in each sport. And then we also host um, several community events, um, our annual truck or treat, a Christmas party, and we have the You Are Beautiful beauty pageant just to help our athletes have a sense of community and to provide that fun atmosphere for them. So overall, when we have our spring games, we have almost 700 athletes and it takes over 300 volunteers to help host and run our spring games. On a repeat level, we have a total of about 50 athletes that are reoccurring in each of the sport events that we host. And then our extra events, such as the trunk or treat and our Christmas party, we open that up to 100 athletes and their families. We are usually at max capacity for those registrations. And then this last year for the You Are Beautiful pageant, we had a record of 35 contestants. I also am the director for, it's called the Rainbow Gang, is our day program. We currently have 17 participants that are here in-house Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2. We follow a therapeutic recreation model as far as providing interventions and facilitations that help our participants work towards goals, such as you know socialization, cognitive development, activities of daily living, things like tying your shoes, buttoning your shirt, anything that will help our participants to be successful. There is also a social component. There's downtime where all of our participants can enjoy interacting with their friends. We have video games for them, crossword puzzles, coloring pages. We have giant guess who. Uno is another big card game here that, that our participants enjoy playing. And then during COVID, we were given a grant and partnered with the county and they helped us to develop a virtual Rainbow Gang program. So I also have five participants that meet virtually Monday through Thursday, and we host two activities a day for them. On Mondays and Thursdays, we have hybrid um, activities. So on Mondays, we jump online and we do learn to draw. And then on Thursdays, we have a very competitive game of bingo. Here in person, there are two staff members. So to maintain safe ratios, 17 is our magic number. And then, so this allowed us to extend our program because there is such a need for after high school, then what is my child going to do? You run into some economic issues. You run into issues of my child is not capable of going and working at a job for part-time, full-time. I, you know, as parents, a lot of our parents still work. Um, and so it's difficult to get their child to and from employment opportunities and, and things of that nature. And they, they don't have anything for their child to do. And so they end up secluded. The participant has no sense of community, friends. It affects your mental health and your emotional health and your physical health. And so that's where programs like the Anderson County Special Needs and Disabilities Board, there's another day program, Elite Academy and Liberty, and then you know Special Population Rainbow Gang come into play is because we can provide those places for our participants to come and build community. One of the other programs that you have is an equestrian program. Tell yes. me about this. So we have had an equestrian program under the director, Lisa Hartman, with Share Therapeutic Horseback Riding. Um, and Lisa is phenomenal. Her heart for this population is just bigger than the universe. And her passion for teaching and about horses and learning from the basics of mucking a stall all the way up to your, your competitions. It's magical to watch her work with our participants. And you recently were awarded some recognition because of that team's accomplishment. County Council um, was very kind in recognizing all of the efforts that have been put forth to host this equestrian team and all of Lisa's efforts to coach our equestrian team and to teach them how to ride. And they were, both Nick and Morgan were very successful this year's state competition that was at Lander University and brought home lots of ribbons and medals in their divisions and it was just great to hear. 
Your history with horses goes back how far? 12, 13 years old. A neighbor had a horse, and it was my love of life then to just have my own, which didn't happen anytime soon. So I just took theirs as mine and eventually got my own and has been horse for the rest of my life. Whenever you have things going on in your childhood and life, and then you have a horse or a dog or you know something that takes you away from the world, it was, I spent pretty much 24 seven, but I wasn't sleeping, I was horsing. Your involvement with this group and helping kids, how did that start? Probably 17 years ago, I had started volunteering in Wilmington with another horse program and became certified as an instructor to work with special needs children and adults. From there, it led me to look into being a Special Olympics equestrian coach, and I certified there, and nobody seemed to wanted to dive into it. But it wasn't my program, so I just continued to volunteer and then moved away and said, well, maybe now it's time for me to look into it more. So I recertified and found Kathy actually at uh, one of the schools was doing some presentation and I said, well, gosh, maybe I can be your equestrian coach and that's how that happened. Do you work with other children or no. kids? This is all you work with and how satisfying is that? Well, it's better than good because there is the ability to know kids with a disability are not disabled and for them to be able to master a 1200 pound horse to be able to right turn, left turn, stop, back up, walk, trot, or independently, like Morgan, have a horse already and to be able to ride, it just amazes me. And it doesn't matter if you're an able-bodied student. I have a, another one of the riders that was a Special Olympics um, team player this year. He has no lower body strength. His upper body strength is great. He walks on crutches, but if you have to go somewhere, he has to use um, a wheelchair to get there. But he's very capable of managing his horse and to be able to cognitively remember some of your patterns or you become a ventriloquist to tell them how to do it is the way it goes. I mean, we'll make anything work. If you want to ride, we can make it happen. Tell me about the competition at Lander. I think there were 40 something participants. Okay, from around the state of South Carolina. Yes. Okay. 40. And and the real hope is that it's going to continue to grow cuz the awareness of the equestrian program has started to, you know, full bloom. So they come to me for the 10 weeks of training and then we, you know, master a couple of the courses that they've set out for us, a trail course, an obstacle course. So you have pole bending and an equestrian equitation class. So we just you know, work at it and then we go and prepare for something that my riders had never been at. So we did a walk class this year, but Morgan's very capable of walk trot, Nick is too. But for our first time and their first time, I said, let's be safe. Let's go and see what we got to look forward to. And we went in with all the training that we could possibly get in that period of time and came back with four first, a second, and a third, and a belt buckle. It don't get much better than that, does it? Nope. A trail class is an obstacle course. You would have to maneuver your horse around cones, over a bridge, um, over ground poles, work through a square, making a right circle, stop your horse, maneuver through the next to go, stop and back up. So it's a pattern that, like I said, it has been trained for, and they are supposed to be able to do that on their own. You're there as a sidewalker leader, but you're not to pull, you're not to coach. And like I said, to be in a ventriloquist, and then you've got the other one, which is a pole bending class. So there's another pattern you have to go past all the poles, and there's six, you run back through them, and then you run back through them the other way, and then you come back out. And that was a timed event, and that's what Morgan got the fastest time in her group to win the buckle and the first place. How long have you been riding a horse, Morgan? Since I was five years old. You're kidding. How did you get on a horse at five? What, what were the circumstances? Your family has horses? Mm -hmm. And so it's just natural for you to, yeah. you remember the name of the first horse? Abigail. And then you went to Lander and you took part in the state Olympic mm -hmm. competition. Tell me what you did down at Lander. Pole bending, 
Now, what is that for those that we don't know? We run through poles with the horse. You won't run through poles, mm -hmm. okay. And what was your horse that you took down there? That Abigail. You still on Abigail, mm -hmm. okay. And what were some of the other things you did down there? Obstacle course. All right, describe that. I was with cones and a bridge. And how much do you practice? Every day, because I got my own farm now. So what's that like? That's been fun, especially in the rain. You like riding in the mm -hmm. rain? How cool is that? Good. Tell me what you won and what you brought back All from. All three blue medals and a belt buckle. And why did you win the belt buckle? For the fastest time at pole bending. Of everybody in South Carolina, you were the fastest. What do you want to do next? Hang out with Lisa Hartman all day. Why is she such a good buddy? Because she's the best riding teacher ever. I can't argue that point. Well, thank you, Morgan, for sharing your story You're with welcome. us, and congratulations on doing so well thank at the uh, competition.